These scientists have found an extraordinary sea creature that possesses human emotions. Due to his deadly powers, the scientists decide to kill him, but a kind toilet cleaner risks her life to save the sea creature. Many years ago, in a small city near the coast, there lived an orphan mute girl named Elisa. She can hear everyone talking, but cannot express her own thoughts in words. She lives in an old apartment building on top of a theater. Elisa does not have a family of her own, but her neighbor, Giles, treats her like his own sister. Elisa works at a secret government laboratory, and her shift starts during midnight. After waking up with the alarm, Elisa takes a shower, dresses up, and carries her breakfast to Giles' apartment. They eat together, and Giles keeps talking about his favorite TV shows. His conversations help Elisa get over her loneliness. The landlord is a kind guy as well, and often gives free movie tickets to Elisa. After leaving her building, Elisa uses the bus to reach her workplace. One of her colleagues named Zelda always looks after Elisa, but she talks a lot about her husband, which makes Elisa feel lonely. She tries to focus on work and cleans every little corner of the laboratories. Suddenly, they get interrupted by their supervisor, who requests all of the staff to be more careful in the future because they are going to have a guest. It's a scientist named Dr. Robert Hofstetler who brought a valuable research asset to the laboratory. After a while, Colonel Richard Strickland enters the laboratory with a huge cylinder filled with water. He's the one who discovered this asset. Elisa gets curious and tries to get a closer look, but Richard asks everyone to leave immediately. After the work shift, Elisa joins Giles to visit a cafe. Giles does not like lime tarts, but buys them anyway because a handsome cafe worker recommended it. Giles wants to get close to that worker, but never gets a chance. They return home and turn on the TV. Seeing the young actors, Giles recalls his own teenage years. He regrets not taking care of his health and finding a lover while was young. It's not easy to live all by yourself. This makes Elisa wonder if she will ever be able to find a lover or end up like Giles. The next day at work, Elisa and Zelda clean the men's washrooms. Suddenly, Richard arrives there but advises the women to continue working. He always carries a cattle prod and puts it on the sink to use the toilet. Once he leaves, Elisa notices that the prod left bloodstains on the sink. After cleaning the stains, the girls walk by the laboratory and notice Richard covered in blood. The staff take him away while the supervisor asks Zelda and Elisa to clean the laboratory. There's blood everywhere, but Elisa also finds Richard's fingers lying on the ground. Zelda rushes to call the supervisor while Elisa starts exploring the laboratory. She finally gets a closer look at the asset, which seems like a merman. After reaching home, Elisa tells everything to Giles, but he does not believe that merman exists. He asks Elisa to have some rest while he goes to deliver his latest painting, but Elisa cannot get the merman out of her head. Next day at work, she sneaks into the laboratory and looks for the merman. This time, he is placed in a pool. Elisa peels an egg she brought for lunch and shows it to the merman. When the merman gets closer, he leaves Elisa in shock because of his masculine body, which is quite similar to humans. Elisa leaves the egg near the pool, and the merman immediately takes it away. When she gets out of the laboratory, Zelda drags her to the office because Richard wants to meet them. Zelda introduces herself and Elisa and explains that Elisa is a pitiful orphan who was found at the seashore. Her voice box was damaged, and that took away her voice and left scars on her neck. Richard feels sorry for her and thanks Elisa for finding his fingers. He asks them to stay away from the merman because he's really dangerous and bit off Richard's fingers. Elisa listens carefully, but she still wants to meet the merman again. Next time, she even brings a music player and teaches sign language to the merman. He gets comfortable with Elisa and eats beside her. Elisa is also excited to make a new friend, and she meets Merman every day. Sometimes they listen to the music, and sometimes they even dance together. One day, Dr. Robert spots Elisa communicating with the Merman, but he does not interrupt her. His actual name is Dimitri, and he's a spy from Russia that is trying to abduct the Merman. Dimitri meets the Russian officers and passes all the information regarding the Merman. Richard is aware of how dangerous this research is, so he installs security cameras at the exits. Elisa is shocked to see them and rushes to check if everything is all right with the merman. She finds him tied up in chains and bleeding nonstop. Suddenly, Richard walks in, so Elisa hides in a corner. 
Richard is the one who made the merman bleed. He tortures the poor creature with his cattle prod and enjoys the painful cries. When the merman falls unconscious, Richard calls in General Hoyt and asks for his opinion. The merman was found in the Amazon forests where the natives used to worship him, but Richard is pretty sure that the merman is not God. His origin is something more complicated, just like his unique respiratory system that works outside of water as well. The general knows that the Russians are trying to steal this creature, so he prefers finishing their job as soon as possible. He wants Richard to cut open the merman for study, like they would do with an animal. Dimitri explains that it's plain stupidity to kill such a rare creature, but General Hoyt knows who is in charge. He's the one who will make the final decision, and his decision is to kill the merman and study his working system. Elisa hears everything and wants to save the merman. She needs help, but there's no one else beside her except Giles. He gets really shocked to hear Elisa's plan. She cannot go against the laws to save the merman just because he's lonely. All the fish in the fish tank are also lonely, but Elisa cannot save them. The merman is just another fish. Elisa requests Giles to listen to her once. For the past few days, she spent a lot of time with the merman. She finds herself quite similar to him. They both cannot talk and use signs to express their emotions. When the merman looks at her, he does not judge her for being incomplete. He sees no flaws in Elisa and feels happy by her presence. No one ever made her feel like this. She cannot just let the merman die. Giles still does not understand her and excuses himself because he needs to deliver the second version of his painting. He has been struggling for years and cannot miss this chance. Giles rushes to meet the client, but the rude client does not even bother to look at the painting. Giles gets really upset and goes to the cafe. The worker there admires his painting and offers a free pie. Giles feels touched by the kind gesture and says that he visits this cafe just because he likes talking to him. His only friend is Elisa, but she can never be good at conversation. The worker smiles and confesses that he loves knowing about his customers. Giles takes this chance to get close to the worker, but he misunderstands Giles and asks him to leave. Giles gets really heartbroken and returns home. He finally realizes that Elisa is the only person whom he can talk to without getting judged. In exchange for being a good friend, Giles is ready to help Elisa and her beloved merman. They must hurry because Richard is not their only enemy. Dimitri meets the Russian officers again and informs them about the merman getting killed. The officer asks him to delay the procedure or abduct the merman tomorrow night. He gives Dimitri a popper that can turn off all the electricity of the laboratories for at least 10 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, Dimitri has to use a special injection to put the merman to sleep and take him to Russia. The injection may kill the merman, but at least the Russians will have the dead body. Dimitri does not say a word in response because he joined this mission as a patriot, but also as a scientist who cannot harm such a valuable creature. However, the Russian officer forces him to carry out this mission as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Elisa is designing her plan as well. Giles uses his painting skills to make a fake ID, and he will pretend to be the laundry guy. As soon as he reaches the parking lot, Elisa will change the camera's positions and bring the merman in a laundry trolley. Afterward, they will escape in Giles's truck. The next day at work, Elisa stays alert, but Richard calls her to the office all of a sudden. He tries to flirt with her, but she rejects him right away. Now she hates him even more and wants to protect the merman from this filthy man. Dimitri is still struggling to make the right decision and requests Richard to delay the cutting procedure. He explains that the merman is an intelligent creature capable of learning emotions and language. Richard smirks and says that Russians also have emotions and intelligence, but the Americans kill them too. So killing a merman is not a big deal. As a Russian, Dimitri feels insulted, but he cannot disclose his identity. He notices the security footage where Elisa is changing the camera's positions, but Dimitri does not inform Richard. Instead, he meets Elisa by himself and asks whom she works for. When he realizes that she's just saving the merman, Dimitri agrees to help her. He tells her to keep the merman in salty water and also feed him special protein. Afterward, Dimitri rushes to turn off the electricity so Elisa can escape easily. Giles has reached the parking lot with his truck, but the security guard does not let him get in. 
Dimitri uses the popper to blast the fuse and injects the security officer so Giles can carry on the mission. Zelda also spots Elisa, but she cannot stop her. Elisa puts the merman in the truck and drives away. Richard reaches the parking lot, but he's too late. Elisa puts the merman in her bathtub and covers him with salt. The merman starts breathing again, and Elisa gets really happy. Meanwhile, Richard still believes that the Russians took away the merman. The security experts say that it was a highly trained, well-financed, elite group of at least 10 men who carried out this abduction. Little do they know it was done by a cleaner. Richard investigates all the staff members, but does not find any clue at all. Meanwhile, Elisa has checked the weather forecast and marks the date when it will rain. Once the canals are full of rainwater, she will release the merman. Dimitri also wants the merman to get released as soon as possible because Richard has started to suspect him. Elisa and Zelda should also behave normal to avoid getting suspicious. Elisa does not take any day off and asks Giles to look after the merman during the night. However, he unintentionally falls asleep and the merman wanders through the whole house. When Giles wakes up, he finds the merman eating one of their cats. The merman gets startled and attacks Giles. Then he runs out of the apartment. Giles immediately calls Elisa and asks her to return home. She is worried about Giles' wounds, but he advises her to start looking for the merman. Elisa follows the bloodstains and finds merman sitting quietly in the theater. He just wanted to watch a movie. Elisa takes him back to the apartment and he apologizes to Giles by touching his head and the wounds. The merman is gradually learning a lot about human emotions. His feelings for Elisa also change, and he starts looking at her in a romantic way. At first, Elisa gets scared, but then she realizes that she is also in love with the merman. After getting close to him, Elisa cannot hide her emotions anymore and keeps smiling ear to ear. Zelda notices the changes in her and immediately understands that her friend is in love. Elisa explains that when it comes to love, Merman is just like a human. Hearing this, Zelda gets satisfied that Elisa finally got a man. They have almost forgotten about releasing the Merman. The one facing the most problems is poor Dimitri. On one hand, Richard is continuously investigating him, and on the other hand, the Russians are asking for proof of the mission completion. Dimitri lies that he killed the Merman with the injection and discarded his body but the Russian officers don't seem satisfied by his explanation. They don't say much right now, but promise to call him soon. Meanwhile, Elisa is getting closer and closer to Merman, and they have started to plan their future together. One day, Elisa blocks all the drainage and fills her bathroom with water so she can swim along the Merman. The water starts to drip down to other apartments and even reach the theater. The neighbors start to complain, so Giles checks on Elisa and gets shocked to see her in the arms of the merman. Giles does not interrupt the romantic moment and waits for Elisa to come out. He also has some interesting news to share. His hair grew back and his wounds disappeared. This happened after the merman touched him. He's not just an animal, he's special. Giles wants to keep for a while to see what else he can do. Elisa agrees because she is also not ready to leave him. However, the longer he stays, the greater the danger will become. Dimitri is 24-7 followed by the police, and Richard will not rest until he finds the kidnappers. Dimitri finally gets a call from the Russian officers, and they inform him about his departure from this country in two days. It's time for Dimitri to return to his homeland. On the other hand, Richard hasn't found any clue of the merman. He has stopped picking up the calls from General Hoyt, so the general arrives at his office. He does not care about the services Richard has done so far. His single mistake is going to ruin his whole life. The general asks Richard to find the merman within two days or he will be erased from this world. The rains have started and it's merman's last night in Elisa's home. She serves him a lot of boiled eggs and stares at him with love. Elisa imagines singing and dancing on the stage with merman, but that's just a dream. It is impossible to make it a reality. The next day, Elisa calls Zelda home because the merman isn't doing well. They need to send him back to the sea as soon as possible. Zelda goes to call Dimitri for help, but he has already left his house. Richard is waiting outside his building and asks the assistant to leave because he's going to handle this matter by himself. Dimitri meets the Russian officer, but instead of sending him back, the officer shoots Dimitri. Suddenly, Richard arrives there and kills the officer. 
He walks to Dimitri and offers to help him if he reveals the names and ranks of the strike team. Dimitri says that the kidnappers didn't have names or ranks. They just clean. Richard immediately thinks of Zelda and reaches her house. She faces him with confidence and lies that she does not know about the merman. Unfortunately, her stupid husband tells everything because he heard Zelda talking on the phone. Richard says thanks to her husband and rushes to Elisa's place. Zelda immediately grabs the phone to call Elisa and tells her about Richard. Elisa does not waste another second and drives the merman to the docks. When Richard reaches her apartment, he finds no one but his sharp eyes notices the marked date on the calendar. Giles and Elisa say goodbye to the merman and ask him to jump in the water, but the merman recalls Elisa's promise to stay beside him. Elisa starts sobbing and explains that they aren't meant to be together. Before the merman can respond, they get shooted by Richard. The evil man gets really happy to finally complete his task, but Giles knocks him down. Afterward, he rushes to check on Elisa, but she is bleeding really badly. The merman heals his wounds and gets up to check on Elisa. He gets really angry and kills Richard to avenge Elisa's death. The police arrive as well and surround the docks. Seeing this, the merman carries Elisa and jumps in the water. Firstly, he heals the wounds, and then he turns Elisa's scars into gills. She takes a deep breath and opens her eyes. Now she can also breathe underwater and spend the rest of her life with her true love, the merman.